What's up, guys? Momodog here again, and today I'm back with a very, very, very interesting video, I believe. Some of you may know already that I had the opportunity to visit DRX Studio, so pretty much the studio of Ni Lohai Chanel Infested, and um, we had a small offline session going for two days straight. Um, after that session, Ni and Lohai made these two outfits for me, respectively. So I thought this was pretty fitting for the video. And during these two days at DRX Studio, I learned a lot. Now, learning a lot is not the same as being able to implement it immediately, but I want to talk about what kind of stuff I learned, especially overall while playing in Korea. And I want to go over some advice that I got from Lohai and Ni, respectively, which might be very interesting for some of you to hear. Because some of that is also very specific to me as a player, and maybe you might have the same flaws as me here and there. So again, it might be very useful for you too. Let's get to number one right away. There are five things that I want to list that I learned mainly while I was in Korea. And the very first thing is the fact that Koreans have insane awareness in their matches. What I mean with this is pretty much the same advice I've given on my channel before, but the Koreans pull it off in a different kind of way, like at an inhumane level. They backdash and size it very efficiently, like they don't overdo it. Like most of the time you will see two backdashes in a row and they will immediately stay on their effective with punish range. Um, like for example, Ni would always stay on this range against me to bait out electrics and immediately launch me. And they're like, as I said, they're always on their effective with punish range. What does this mean? So like with double gen, your electric is like maybe 2.4 range. Like it will hit from here. So standing on range 2.4, where a lot of moves from the opponent might also whiff, or like maybe even a bit further away because they might they might whiff a move and get into you more. Um, it's pretty optimal. So like on this range is where they would try to stay the most while well, moving around. And not only do they stay on their effective whiff punish range, they're always ready for the whiff punish. Their head is always in the game. They're really, really focused while playing. Koreans have a different kind of focus, man. It's insane. And Against Mulgold, for example, against him I noticed it the most. He's a very, very insane player. I was also at one of the offline sessions I attended when John Ding organized one. Um, he would also always stay around range 2 with Claudio, where his hop kick connects, for example, as a with punish. And he would almost never drop a with punish. Up close, like when he was in my face, he would keep his down forward 1 2 loaded. Down forward 1 2 is Claudio's twin piston, launching mid mid. And even when he was sidestepping randomly, he was always ready for a whiff. And this is something that I need to practice way more too. Super important that I always immediately recognize a whiff and at least try to launch it. You're not going to get a launch on every single whiff with Delgen because you might drop an electric here and there. But the only way to practice this is by going for it. And I haven't been doing that enough lately. I need to go for proper whiff punishes way more as I did with Noctis back in Tekken 7. Some of you may know that I meant Noctis at the end of Tekken 7's lifespan, even though I started off with Delgen. But again, always ready for the whiff. Like, Mughal pulled it off in that way, like the effective range on range 2, and then when side walking up close, you always keep the down for 1 to locked and loaded, no matter what it is, except maybe for jabs, where you would use 1 2 as a whiff punish. Ni would always stay one backdash away from me, so like he would backdash like this, and then he would stay patient around that range. And if he really wanted to disengage, he would just backdash even further if he knows that I'm not gonna whiff anytime soon, and he would just let me um, come to him. Because knee plays a very um, keep out heavy and timing heavy double gen instead of a mix heavy double gen. And he knee launched almost all of my whiffed electric, same as Mogul. And Lohai would do it a bit differently. Lohai would bait me by dashing in and immediately back dashing out in order to create whiff opportunities. For example, he would dash in and then back dash once. And if I tried to do a keep out jab, for example, he would immediately be ready for a whiff punish. And a bonus on Lohai uh, compared to Mogul and knee, for example. Um, he told me, uh, this is a bit paraphrased, so bear with me here. Sidestepping keeps me as vulnerable as, say, ducking, if not even more, because you're not able to block at all. Neither able to block high, mid, or low while sidestepping. So that's why low high tends to step less and tends to block, duck, or backdash more, since those cover more options theoretically. Which made a lot of sense to me, because I am someone who will try to sidestep a lot when I'm close in your face because that's when sidesteps are the strongest. They will cover the most distance. Like, check how fast I get around double gen here and check how fast I get around double gen when I sidestep from here. 
way slower, as you can see, because I cover less distance. And even when I'm stepping up close, I find myself getting tracked a lot in this game. And, well, the way to avoid that is by either blocking or ducking, depending on what the move is, and maybe even if they don't have a lot of range to just backdash it properly. As I said before, a single backdash can go a long way. So this is what he means with that, pretty much. You won't see Lohai stepping all that much, but when he has the read, for example, when he had reads on my health sweeps, I will still find him uh, sidewalking to the left. Number two on this list, this is more something that I observed while playing against Koreans and no specific advice that I got from anyone. It's that Koreans tend to just wing everything they do. And what does this mean? Like in the first few matches I played against most Koreans, for example, when I played against JD Sears Dragunov, I did really well in the first few matches because um, he didn't really have much of an idea what he's gonna do. Like Koreans play a really, really um, on the fly layer zero pretty much. Um, they will just throw out their best flow charts, for example, or their best offense and pray that it works. If it doesn't, they will adapt on the fly. And I had a lot of success playing against that, like their layer zeros, because, you know, no adaptation yet. They don't know what I have in store. Most of the time they would have trouble dealing with my morning crow stuff, for example, when I was in heat. Like, um, they would have trouble dealing with the morning crow um, heat smash. And what I observed on JTCR, for example, and this was really interesting, uh, again, in the first few matches, I had quite a lot of success because he was clueless about the Morning Crow heat smash. But after like five or six matches, if not even earlier, he started jabbing manual Morning Crow out on reaction, rendering it useless when I was in heat. And this was very interesting to me because he was he immediately came up with a plan on how to deal with that Morning Crow situation when I was in heat. And I couldn't um, manually morning crawl him anymore. Like he would either rage art when he's in rage because most of the time I tend to go for the morning crawl heat smash when it kills. So he countered it in either by jabbing it out or by rage arting me. And he came up with the solution very on the fly. Like um, his solution at first didn't work. He had no solution pretty much. And then he immediately came up with a solution in match to fuck me up pretty much. Um, that's why I think that's also something that you should uh, try to practice more. Like when something that you do doesn't work in match, immediately try to come up with a solution um, that would work instead. For example, let's say, I don't know, a very dumb example. You're side walking right against Kazuya and you find yourself not having a lot of success with it. Maybe the next best solution would be to backdash more or even side walk left and see if that has more success. Since maybe that one move that tracks side walk right looks like it wouldn't track side walk left. And then you go to the lab later and find even better solutions, like the perfect solutions. But coming up with a solution like that on the fly in match was, again, um, a very interesting trait I observed on, for example, JDCR's defense. Like, even when he didn't properly lab an option, he still had good defense locked in order to deal with it, for example, against my manual morning crow. And another thing with Koreans is that they never tend to eat the same pattern more than twice in a row. And what do you mean with that, for example? Um... There were a few cases where I did, for example, while sending 1-1 one, one into Heat Smash instead of doing it manually. JDCR immediately recognized that it's a high, so he immediately started ducking. And he did eat it the first and second times because he didn't duck the high. But after that, um, he never ate while sending 1-1 one, one into Heat Smash again. Never ever. So basically, Koreans are very good at observing our flowcharts and fucking up for it. And eventually I just had to play without flowcharts or like with much less flowcharts. Koreans are fans of safe floor charts. For example, Ulsan came up to me and said, with Azucena, I love doing 2-1 and hit into 2-1 because there's nothing they can do. So it's either free damage or I'm only minus three on block. Stuff like that. Um, same goes for, for example, Levagen's jab into back four or jab into down three. But a lot of the times they just gave up on their plus frames and kept playing the neutral instead. Number three on this list is very simple advice, but very effective advice very much. And all Koreans told me this. Um, more patience. And this is less about pressing much, much less and more about when to press. For example, you've probably seen Ni and JDCR play before. They're super good at placing their jabs in the neutral to keep your offense from going, um, like going ham. And the reason they do this is because the jab is the easiest way to keep you out in the neutral. And what I did... That, is, that makes me really vulnerable to these kinds of players is I tended to check a lot with either 1-1 or down 4-4 since 1-1 starts tracking really well at certain minus frames. And, well, they immediately caught up to that and they started ducking and uh, launching my 1-1s a lot, for example, or they would step block my down 4-4 since it's much easier to step block in this game 
So checking in general in Tekken 8 is more difficult because um, sidestep alone was buffed, like it's more evasive. It's side walking that uh, wasn't really touched in this game. So step blocking, for example, Ulsan would, um, when I played against Ulsan, I was also at his place while I was in Korea. He would always implement small steps while um, he would keep up his offense against Devilgen. So like he would constantly bully me in my face, um, do small side steps and try to make, uh, try to create as many bursts as possible. And just a small step block can make my health sweep with, for example. If not for him doing like jab, side step jab to keep me from even doing slow moves. And even back forward too, when step blocking just gets blocked. So it's this kind of stuff that makes it really difficult for me to check these kinds of players. And that's when I realized, okay, I need to run away more with Devilgen and try to play out the neutral more instead of trying to win um, interactions up close. But that's something I've said about Devilgen really early already, that, that it's one of his big flaws, that up close this character doesn't do much anymore really. Something that I want to learn in the next few days is to consistently count it, confirm this in a neutral, which may be a bit hard, but um, Noctis had a similar move in down 4-4-2 in Tekken 7. It had a 10 frame confirm window and I still managed to confirm it like 8 out of 10 times when I practiced it a lot. So practice, practice, practice. I need to practice a lot these next few days. And again, it's very common for Koreans to give up their plus frames, for example, maybe plus 8 after a jab. And if someone retaliates into you, instead of pressing a, a frame trap that can be countered, for example, you could maybe power crush this or I don't know. Any other option that could beat it again, maybe a lag about you on another character. Instead of um, going for frame traps, which they do uh, go for from time to time, obviously, for a counted launch, um, most of the time they just gave up their plus frames and backdashed and then immediately recognized a whiff or a retaliation and just used their plus frames to whiff punish you, essentially. Giving, giving up your plus frames like that is not dumb because eventually people will think, um, oh, okay, he's not taking his plus frames, let me press into him. And then realize, oh, you're already up launched in the air because they intentionally gave up their plus frames in order for exactly for you to press into them. Or like, in other words, mash into them. Number four on this list. More back for two for locking opponents down. And this was advice from Lohai specifically. It's kind of obvious advice, but Devil Gen's tracking options aren't necessarily the best. Up for two is very slow and... 1 plus 2 is just not that good of a move at minus 12 and having no cancel. That move was way stronger near the wall and Tekken 7 was probably one of the best homing moves, if not the best homing move at the wall back in the day. So you find yourself having a lot of trouble uh, conditioning your opponent in the neutral from stepping. And the character strength in general boils down to conditioning and back for 2 is part of that right now. So using strong mids to condition ducking, then work for two to condition them from stepping is the main way to um, build up health sweep mind games pretty much. Not only is back for two around the same speed as health sweep in the neutral, um, you got like back neutral forward. So if done properly, it's like 17 frames. A health sweep is 19 frames. So you might catch them for ducking for the sweep even. But um, the main point to go for this is to and go for a single back for two and conform it into a back for two one. You don't want to risk the minus 10 situation all the time with back 4 2 on, uh, on blocks since back 4 2 on 2 was made much easier to deal with. So the best thing to do here, as with down 4 2, is to learn how to confirm it. And I'm going to go back to trying to confirm this a lot the next few days again. Like a lot. I got a lot of practicing to do. If not the next few days, the next few weeks. And Korean's movement is 10 times above the level of Europe, making it super difficult to play Devil Gen over there without risking your life with almost all buttons. Even a down forward one can get you launched if you place it dumbly. So less is more here. Press less buttons, but press valuable buttons. That's uh, that's what I um, took from the advice of Lohai. Like, uh, I don't have to keep checking with 1-1 necessarily, especially since they started ducking and launching me for 1-1 a lot. And... Instead, I should try to condition them way more with back for two, back for two one, and once they stop um, like trying to sidestep my stuff twenty four seven, or once they start only step blocking, I can maybe start going for dash health sweeps or you know um, apply other kinds of mix ups. But the main point here again is less is more. And the fifth point, and this is the hardest one to implement probably, but it's the most valuable advice I've gotten straight from me and somewhat also from Lohai. At the very end of, the, of my visit to DRX Studios, like on the second day, 
very late into the evening. I asked Nee for some advice that he would give me specifically since, well, there's not much advice he would give me for the way I play double gin since I do play him very optimally, but um, more some advice on what I'm doing wrong with the character. It's, well, to paraphrase it a bit, Nee said I'm taking the easy way out with double gin by mostly using 1-1 one, one as my high option. And 1-1 one, one is super susceptible to getting ducked in launch or stepped to the right and then launched. But most of the time, the Koreans would just stay ducked. They would dash in my face and then duck for the potential 1-1 one, one keep out. And here is where the patient electric, as Nee says, comes into play a lot. Either replace the 1-1 one, one with a single jab or the patient electric. And what does this mean? The opponent will keep trying to anticipate the electric. Like, they will dash into you, they will duck in your face. And the more you wait, like, the more you let them come to you, and the more you wait, the more likely it is that they become impatient at some point and run into your electric. So what happened against Nee a lot, for example, is I would dash in his face, I would hard duck, and I see, okay, there's no electric, I dash in, bam, I'm launched, I'm in the air. Because he waited specifically for me to try and counter it. So what I'd have to do is instead is stay duck even longer or duck and dash duck again, which leaves me super susceptible because by that time I will just react to the opponent constantly ducking in my face. Just a dash into duck is not really something you can react to as the defender, but um, you know, staying ducked or ducking and then ducking again, um, this is where stuff becomes really stupid. So that's why the patient electric, as Nisa says, becomes super strong because again, the more you try to anticipate the electric and the, the less it just comes out on the timing you're anticipating, the stronger it becomes because eventually you will be in the air anyway because you will mess up your timing on trying to counterplay the electric eventually. And what Nee also did sometimes was he would try he would step with me. Like um, he would see me sidewalking to the left and he would do sides of that electric um, himself to like step with me and then track me instead of going for a dash electric, for example. So like a sides of left electric would track me even better than a dash electric sometimes. If you get hit in the process of trying to anticipate the right electric timing, that's no problem. You, you either um, increase your speed on the timing or like in general you just adapt or um, you just try to deal with whatever is coming at you first, like what, whatever they're trying to throw at you for trying to counter the electric first before going for electrics again. Some characters, for example, have really strong high crushing moves or like high crushing launchers even. That's when you want to start dealing with those moves first until they stop using them as much before you try going uh, for electrics in your game plan again. These were pretty much the five things, or like the most important things I learned while in Korea, and implementing this will take months, I can guarantee you. So like the next few weeks and months, you'll see me lose a lot simply because I'm trying to implement these things way more. Um, so if you, if you want to follow me on my journey of sucking and losing in rank because I'm trying to um, implement new ways of playing this character, feel free to follow me on Twitch and I will try to stream more regularly since I'm back in Germany now. And a small bonus that I noticed was a huge flaw of mine while in Korea. When I don't practice throw breaking and with punishment effective, uh, like uh, regularly before every session, for example, electric from movement and um, similar things, um, I become super rusty at doing that. It's so like electric from movement, I just didn't get to, like, didn't manage to do it at all. My throw breaking was super iffy, simply because I didn't manage to practice it before every session. I had no PC available at all times in Korea, so my time was very limited when playing. I didn't really have time to practice prior. So something that I'm also gonna implement more the next few weeks, months, you name it, is uh, before every session, I will try to practice throw breaking and with punishing from movement way more, again, at the very least. This pretty much sums up everything I learned in Korea. Well, not everything. I learned much more than this, but this is the most important stuff that I learned. Um, that is the most relevant for my character and maybe even to you guys, if you feel stuck in one of these areas or maybe even in all of them like me. Um, I hope you learned a lot from this because I sure did. Like my trip to Korea was invaluable. I think I learned a lot, but again, implementing everything uh, will be a month long process. So this is gonna take quite a while. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'm pretty sure this is very interesting to many of you. Um, peace out. I'll be back with another video soon. Very likely with the analysis videos on my matches against Nian Lohai.